Hi everyone and welcome back. I want to start by saying that this channel is not dedicated only to high-end audio. I'm still getting excited about affordable units that sound like proper hi-fi and I believe that today is that kind of day. Two of the most interesting DACs that I have tested last year were Gustav R26 and A26 and I still believe that they have one of the greatest price to performance ratio that I have tested so far. And it seems that Gustav is trying to expand their influence towards the entry to mid-level market with a new brand and with a new product. This little guy right here is called Audalytic AH90 and it has more features than any Gustav made product and it costs just $5.99 US dollars. Let's check it out. I was surprised seeing so many features on such a small unit and if you are wondering what it does more exactly, first of all it's a wired streamer, uh, if you have a rune core installed then this one will work as a rune endpoint, I used it this way most of the time and it works simply great. It has a flagship grade AKM silicon so it should work amazing as a DAC, it has a simplified volume control so you can use this one as a preamp as well. And according to its faceplate, it also has a headphone amplifier section, but more about that in a second. Now, if you have ever tried a Gustav X18 or X16, then this little guy will feel very familiar because it has a very similar footprint. We have the same fully CNC machined aluminum case. We have a thick metallic plate right here. We have an 80 step volume control. We have some big metallic feet right here with rubber inlays. So, in truth, I cannot complain much about this one in terms of build quality. I believe this is a great looking and also great build quality unit. As for controls, we have two headphone jacks out of which one is a 4.4 mm balanced one. We have a volume control which also works as a menu navigator. And we also have a monochrome uh, display somewhere around here. Besides the usual XLR and RCA analog outputs, we have an Ethernet, USB Type-C, optical and two coaxial digital inputs. There's a microSD card slot, but please don't touch that one as its firmware is located on the pre-installed microSD card. It's surprising seeing an AC and DC socket. We have a switching mode power supply inside and if you want to power it with a linear and regulated power supply that could potentially improve its performance, then of course you can use an external 12 to 15 volt power supply. Under its hood we have the flagship AKM configuration, meaning the AK4499EX DAC chip, together with the AK4191 Delta Sigma modulator. Uh, we have a custom FPGA that controls every feature of this unit. We have some custom femtosecond clock generators, which is a rare sight for a unit costing as much. We have the flagship XMOS digital receiver, which also unlocked MQA playback, if that is your thing. Uh, we have a hybrid IV and uh, output stage consisting of several op amps and discrete components like uh, diodes and resistors. And I'm very happy seeing a hybrid output stage and IV stage. Also, according to a picture posted on the Gustav website, we have two transistors used for its headphone amplifier section. One is being used uh, for the regular headphone jack and two of them are used when using the balanced connection, balanced output. So we have one watt of power via that balanced output and uh, 0.5 watts of power via the regular headphone jack. But I'm pretty sure those uh, transistors will sound uh, pretty differently compared to an op-amp based headphone amplifier. Thank you, Gustard. And let's check how this one sounds with both headphones and loudspeakers. Let's go. I need to mention that I tried this one in my stereo setup most of the time as a rune endpoint, as a DAC and as a preamplifier, followed by a power amplifier and those two loudspeakers. I also tried this one for about a day as a streamer, DAC and headphone amplifier with a bunch of planar and dynamic headphones. And I need to confess, although I'm using this one for about three days now, 
I didn't feel that it was changing its tonality or its sound in any way. We don't have a big uh, transformer, we don't have big capacitors. So I do believe in about five, maximum 10 hours, uh, you are getting maximum performance out of this one. The very first impressions that it left on me is that we got a soothing, relaxing, easygoing, natural, rich and organic sounding DAC. And I know that a lot of you are dreaming about owning an art war leather DAC that has those skills like, you know, maybe musician Pegasus 2, like Gustav R26, uh, Holo Audio, Rockna Audio, you know, Dana Fripp, so on and so forth. And uh, I'm very glad because I believe I found a substitute that sounds uh, very similar, that has very similar skills, but without inflicting a critical hit to your wallet. I was adding more tunes to my playlist and I wanted to know how this one does dynamics and transients. I mean, you know who I am, I hope. And I arrived at Tatar Warrior by The Who and in no time I felt that the hair on my hands and on my back started rising. So clearly it does a few things differently compared to a regular uh, DAC. I will never be a snobby audiophile and recommend you only the most expensive DACs, amplifiers, loudspeakers or headphones because uh, this hobby is not only for rich people, this hobby is for everybody and I'm very happy getting goosebumps from such an affordable unit and I want you to start with the right foot because you can kill three birds with just one single stone and using this one as a rune endpoint, DAC, headphone amplifier or preamplifier and still sound organic, natural and rich. I don't find it impressive when rendering micro level information. So it's still good in here, but not really amazing. I'm still hearing lots of tiny things, but not a lot of them and not all of them. So clearly it's okay in here, but not really amazing. Also, this is not one of those lightning fast sounding ducks. This one is uh, mellow a little bit, slower sounding in a way. It's not super lightning fast. Uh, it's not changing the pace super fast with electronic tunes. Uh, but if you are pushing away all those technicalities and you are just uh, focusing on enjoying your music, then uh, AH night will be rocking like a rock star. It knows how to do proper justice to music. And without a single doubt, its mid-range performance was quite magical sounding to me because the voices always sounded like human voices. Uh, violin sounded like a violin and organ pipes always left a long lasting impression on me. The trebles are clear and defined, but I never find them aggressive. So I can listen to rock tunes all day long without a problem. Actually, the trebles are slightly rolled off past 16 kilohertz. So forget about over sharpness, about strong leaning edges. That will never happen with this one. The bass is kind of rounded sounding, so it's not the fastest, not the cleanest as well, but it's quite punchy. It's slow, but punchy. So it's like swapping a lightweight boxer with a heavyweight boxer. So watch out for those punches down low when the bass notes are hitting you. Let's talk a little bit about imaging and soundstage as clearly Gustard and Audalytic for that matter know how to do proper justice to imaging and never limit the sound on the X and Y axle. I won't give you sugar-coated stories that this one sounds bigger than life because that wouldn't be true, uh, but at the same time I believe that it sounded more interesting and slightly airier compared to units that I have tried in the same price bracket in the last uh, six months or so. So yes, it sounded slightly bigger compared to SMSL and topping units in the same price bracket. It won't give a good spanking to R26 and A26 by Gustard, but it goes into the same direction. It tries to unlock your imagination when listening to music. So this is not a 100% 3D and super holographic sounding unit, but it tries to mimic that kind of sound. Lots of things will be appearing around your loudspeakers, sometimes coming from a higher or from a lower altitude. And the same happens via its headphone amplifier section, which I must say is not that bad. Soundstage was never pushed up front, but the imaging was truly fascinating. And having a pretty good transparency, I was able to zoom in into a drum player playing behind a rock band, 
on the murmurs produced by backing vocals. And these are all small things, but small things usually differentiate a mediocre sounding one from a good sounding unit. And I do believe this one is far from being a mediocre sounding unit. And it still has an ace under its sleeve, which I'll mention in a second. Audalytic is not telling us a lot about its headphone amplifier section, so I tried opening this one up, uh, but sadly it appears that it has more screws than these two right here. I believe some of them are sitting uh, behind its metallic feet, but I didn't want to damage these, so I couldn't open this one. I'll be focusing on a single picture that I found on Gustav website, and according to it we have two transistors used for its headphone amplifier section. One used for its regular headphone jack and two of them for its balanced output, which provides about one watt of power per channel. And one watt of power doesn't seem like a lot of power, right? But once I was uh, listening to music via headphones with my daily drivers, I just stood there transfixed for a few minutes because I was getting super loud SPL levels. With Meze Elite, with uh, Elisetic Caribdis, with Kenneth and Rogner, I was arriving maximum at 65 out of 80 steps available, and my usual listening volume was around 60 out of 80. So clearly I had plenty of volume, plenty of SPL, plenty of headroom, but what surprised me was actually not SPL, because volume and well-driven are two different things. I was surprised by dynamics, how punchy those dynamics were via headphones. While it won't bring the thunder with electronic tunes and my ears were not clapping like butterfly wings with some crazy dynamics, I was still smiling, I was still feeling great, and dynamics were being felt with my whole uh, body. So overall I believe that its headphone amplifier section is not good enough, this is a good headphone amplifier section. Roses are red, but Violets are not always blue for the little AH-90 because it lacks some resolution and it didn't impress me that much with its uh, detail retrieval. For me and me alone this part is very important because uh, from Monday till Friday I'm critically listening, I'm engaging my zooming skills and I'm listening for pleasure mostly on weekends. However, if I wouldn't have this YouTube channel and my website, then this part alone wouldn't be so important. I'm not implying that it seriously lacks resolution, but it just didn't impress me that much in this region as its tonality, sweetness, smoothness, and punchy dynamics. Resolution is still there, and I was able to trace a few micro details, but it's not doing it by default. It lets you choose if you want to focus on the small things or just go with the flow and, um, you know, enjoy your time in the company of your tunes. And having heard a good deal of converters, it gets a strong 7.5 out of 10 or a weak 8 out of 10 in terms of resolution and detail retrieval. I briefly mentioned how its frequency response works with my own set of ears, and I'll say it again that the mid-range section was the one that won my heart and soul. It's very close to a really well-made art war Ladadak, so it's always smooth, organic, sweet sounding, and personally I wouldn't change a thing on its mid-range performance. The bass would impress you more with its quantity rather than with the quality. And it feels mostly rounded, so there is not so much in those 20 Hz notes, there is a lot more in the 50 Hz notes. And that can be felt mostly via its headphone amplifier section. You can improve its layering, its cleanness, and its quality overall by using that Ethernet connection. And please don't hate me for saying this, but it sounds just better in all regards via Ethernet connection versus any other digital input. Trebles are not sparkly sounding. You can sense the shape and the materials out of which acoustic instruments were made, but you'll never sense any kind of over sharpness or very strong leaning edges. Think about a very relaxing sounding treble that almost feels rolled off uh, past 16 kilohertz and you'll get the sound of this little puppy. So overall it worked absolutely great with voices, with acoustic instruments. It sounded great with modern tunes and with electronic as well, but that won't be its forte. Wrapping up, I'm leaving for days like this when an affordable unit does so many things and sounds great on top of that. 
For 5.99, we get a rune endpoint that never lagged on me. We get a tonally rich dark that puts sweetness and warmth above technicalities, and also a pretty good headphone amplifier section that never added noises with ultra sensitive loads as IMs. Tidal Connect is not working at this point, however, I'm being told that it should work just fine with the next firmware update. I'm closing my eyes on this, I'm closing my eyes on its weak resolving abilities and on never reaching those lightning fast speeds with Electronica tunes, as everything else impressed me with headphones and loudspeakers alike. It was never flat, it was never boring, it was never too desounding, more like on the opposite camp, trying to impress a music lover rather than a snobby audiophile. Thanks for watching. I hope you like my approach to hi-fi reviews. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you very, very soon. Cheers.